Hello, investors. Today on Stocks to Watch, we're turning to the resource sector with a closer look at Aftermath Silver, listed on the TSXV as AAG and over-the-counter in the United States as AAGFF. The Canadian exploration company really has a standout asset in Peru, which is home to one of Latin America's most more advanced, underdeveloped silver, copper, manganese deposits. And leading the charge at this company is chairman and director Michael Williams, who's experience spans capital markets, project development, and M&A across the global mining space. Michael, welcome to the show. We're excited to hear about Aftermath Silver today. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks for having me on. Yes, absolutely. A pleasure. Baron Gala is a development stage project and a potential future source of three metals critical to the current energy transition, according to your CEO, silver, copper and manganese. And of course, a lot of people are watching Aftermath Silver. They're interested in silver. And I understand if this is correct, you have a silver resource equivalent to 140 million silver ounces. Is that right? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Well, actually, Ashley, that's 140 million ounces of silver. That's not an equivalent. That's that's what we have in silver. Now, the, the breakdown is the measured and indicated is 101 million ounces with 39 million in, inferred. Now, having said that, we do have a new uh, mineral resource estimate update coming out. So you will see those numbers change. We're, we're adding uh, 80 holes to that uh, figure. Mm -hmm. Now, of those 80 holes, 30 are step out. So that'll help increase the resource. And uh, the rest are converting the inferred to, to measure and indicated, you know, we, we hit on about 90%, 95% of our drilling. So uh, last uh, couple of drill programs have been very successful. Yeah, 95%, quite a significant number. Um, I think for investors that may not be familiar with Baron Gala, maybe you can talk a little bit about the property and what makes it specifically geologically interesting. Well, B B Baron Gale is a very interesting project, and I know we all say that on, on the company side, but it's located in southern Peru uh, with infrastructure close by. We have rail, power, uh, a community that's historically worked in the mining industry, and roads. So we, we have those key elements, which on big projects like this can, can be vital uh, to your economics down the road when you put out your your studies. But the I think the key thing on Barangila is it has a significant silver resource, mm -hmm. as, as we've just uh, talked about, you know, but then you pair that with uh, a significant amount of copper, then it becomes special. Now, there's lots of manganese globally, but that manganese is what we would call feral manganese. It's used in the steel industry. The manganese at to um, Berengila, it, it's hosted in an oxide. This is a, an oxide deposit. It's called the carbonate replacement deposit. But the significance of that, manganese is used in car batteries in the cathode. Mm -hmm. And it can only be uh, manganese that's acid soluble, which means it has to be oxide or carbonate. Ours is oxide. So it works the target would be to produce a product that is eventually used in car batteries. And there's very few of those globally. And, you know, you'll, you'll see our numbers when they come out the update, but I, I think we're going to be one of the biggest uh, globally potentially mm -hmm. for a uh, size of a manganese deposit. And the, the other key element on manganese, it's, it's a difficult metal to, to make work with the batteries, it has to be 99.98% pure. Our initial test work, which we've put out publicly, is showing we're 99.9%. .9%. So mm. we're over a big hurdle and we have three critical metals, as you alluded to. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, 99.9%. .9%. I certainly understand that and the importance of it. And also, as, as we're talking about the critical minerals list, how important this is globally and then let's just talk about America in general. You know, when when you think about you know the current administration and what it is that the, what's so important to them, um, and using this in the U.S., how important that must be, and exciting for you for the future. Would you say? 
Well, it, it is. I, I think, you know, we've we've seen over the last 10, 15 years, the China factor come into play where, yeah. you know, there's a bifurcation now in, in global mining markets, I believe. You've got your product is either going to go to China and a product like manganese currently 93% is processed in China. So they have a chokehold on that particular metal, which is key to the battery. You know, every EV battery that we see generally has an M in it for manganese. It's replacing cobalt. Um, so it's, it's, it's vital, but, um, go, going forward. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, very important. Certainly. Now we're talking about the potential for uh, producing battery grade manganese. And there's also been mention of the, the possible copper porphyry systems at depth there. So are you pursuing both of those alongside the silver development or is one taking priority over the other right now? No, what we're doing is we've moved to the east. What we've seen is our copper grades and uh, pickup. And that's part of the geological model. Now, uh, the, the last round of drilling, one of the holes delivered, I believe, was 150 meters of uh, 1% copper, you know, uh, 289 grams of silver and 7% um, manganese. Like, that is a booming hole. So we're following up on that. Um, this system was formed by something. It's probably a porphyry. And, you know, our thesis is it's close by. So we we want to look for that because uh, we we potentially could have additional tier. And then I always say this deposit then would go from a tier one asset, tier one being defined as no matter what the metal price is, should be economic to mm. an asset that, um, you know, would be world class if you found another deposit with it. And speaking of the metal price, you know, silver, uh, is it trading right around $40 right now? You know, our, our largest investors, Eric Sprott, who's considered one of the premier mm -hmm. silver investors globally. And, you know, I think we're Eric's third largest holding. And uh, his thesis is that uh, he expects silver to be $50 by the end of the year. Now, I think $40 is a uh, psychological barrier. And if it passes that, uh, we, we certainly expect silver to go a lot higher. Now, predicated on the silver gold ratio, which probably a lot of your followers uh, follow, uh, I, I think you could see silver go a lot higher than it currently is. Hmm. Hopeful for that prediction, certainly for Aftermath Silver. Yeah, um, very much so. Yeah. So I, I guess I'd like to ask, you know, how, how current market conditions factor into your plans for the project now? Well, you, you, you earlier, you asked me about the U.S. and I, I should have... Um, gone into a little bit more greater detail. So you've got a split in the markets with either uh, products like this going to China uh, for their industry and, and for their uh, vertical markets, or they're going into hopefully the West, like the United States is behind. And I say the United States, I mean the West, Europe, U US. Mm -hmm. And the only way they can catch up with China is to spend trillions of dollars. So we are seeing, you, you saw it started with the Biden administration and the IRA program, right. where the U.S. is willing, it looks like, to help companies like us process in the United States and then get access to those metals rather than them to go to China. Now, you know, I, I as chairman, we I have a obligation to the shareholders to get the best possible value down the road. So if the Chinese come in with a big offer, I, I need something to counter that. And I think the best way to counter it would be to start working with the, the U.S., the Europeans, the Japanese mm -hmm. uh, end users and governments to see if there's a track to get this product to your markets. When I say yours, it's mine too. I mean, based in sure. Canada. So it's you know, obviously, we would prefer uh, things go into into North America, but that looks like the model. There is a company that has manganese out of um, Australia, Element Twenty Five. You know, they have an agreement to process. I believe it's in Louisiana. State and federal uh, taxes or, or, or pardon me, subsidies are about two hundred and twenty million dollars that'll go towards that project. Uh, if they bring it on stream. So I think that's the future model. And, and you know, quite frankly, Ashley, these projects aren't cheap 
to put into production. You know, there there were hundreds of millions of dollars. Some of them are up to a billion, if not more. You know, mm -hmm. we'll have our uh, economic numbers out next year when we put out a PEA or a PFS, pre-feasibility study, and I'll, I'll have concrete numbers. But that's, you know, some of the things you're looking at. So I think harnessing kind of more investors uh, obviously would be key here. So, you know, I'd like you to just sum it up maybe in three points about what really makes Aftermath Silver a compelling story for investors right now. Well, look, I, I, I think uh, silver is an interesting metal. And, and one of the things with silver, there's very few large silver deposits worldwide. We have one of them starts right at surface. So, mm. um, you know, the, the chances are this is, is going to have low mining costs. We'll be able to demonstrate that uh, a little bit later next year when we put out our economic studies. But it also has a significant amount of copper. The world is clamoring for copper. You know, some people say it's the new oil. There, mm. there are shortages. We haven't been making discoveries on on copper. We need to put a lot more money into exploration to find new copper deposits. They're not coming on stream. What used to take 10 years from discovery on a big copper project is now 20 years. And a lot of people think it's going to 23. That's too far out. Uh, United States, Europe, we all need copper. And, and we have a significant silver, but we have manganese also and and that's like having a stock with a warrant because <laughs> the, the yeah. world is going to electric vehicles whether you like it or not now mm -hmm. i i per i drive the internal combustion engines but you can see it coming by 2030 i think the number is up to 40 to 50 percent of worldwide cars will be evs so that's the future we have a metal that fits that niche and it could be one of the biggest globally. So I think that that puts us in good stead. We're in a country that is pro-mining. Mm -hmm. uh, we have infrastructure and it's well advanced. There's, uh, you know, 4.2 kilometers of drilling, which is, uh, you know, 4,200, um, 42,000 meters. And, speaking in metric now, but that's a significant project. So I think largely it's de-risked geologically, mm -hmm. comes right to surface. So from an engineering point of view, I think it's largely de-risked. Uh, and then we just need to uh, demonstrate that the metallurgy works and we can produce a product that will work in uh, EV batteries. Absolutely. You know, one of the main and I would say takeaways for me is the at surface, which you says drives down the cost. So, so important not to mention the mining friendly jurisdiction and obviously the mix of high demand metals. I mean, it really sounds like a perfect recipe. So thank you so much for your You're insights. Yes. Chairman and Director Michael Williams of Aftermath Silver, again, listed on the TSXV as AAG and the OTCQX in the United States as AAG. A G F F. Clearly, you're making a strong case for a long term investors mm -hmm. watching the silver and battery metal story unfold. So thanks again, Michael Williams. Yeah, thanks for having me on.